born on May 11, 1885, and died on April 8, 1938. Joe King Oliver was Louis' musical influence and mentor. Louis joined King Oliver's Creole Jazz Band in Chicago in the year 1922. From thenceforth, Louis' career began to blossom. In the mid-1920s, Louis began recording under his own name. His groups for recording only, only for recording were called the Hot Five and the Hot Seven, and they played some hot music, and everybody danced to it, danced some hot steps. You better believe it. The great Earl Father Hines, as he was known, pianist extraordinaire, was featured on many of the Hot Five and Seven recordings. Louis' style was unique. It was revolutionary. He employed the upper register of the trumpet, which wasn't the norm then. And his solo work was outstanding, and the concept for the time was quite new. Louis laid the scenes for the evolution of jazz from Dixieland style of the 1920s to swing style, of the, of, which was the musical expression popular during the 1930s. This era is known as the Big Band era, and you were introduced to many of the folks that played and participated in that era with the films that were being shown. The term swing was the name given to jazz music during the 1930s. The use of the term was brought into common use in or around 1931, where the great composer, band leader, and pianist Duke Ellington recorded it don't be a thing if it what? You better believe it, that is the word. Now, Jelly Roll Martin claimed that he was the first to use the term when he composed a song named Georgia Swing in 1906. Does anybody can contest that Jelly Roll said he invented the word swing? I don't know, if anybody was around in 1906, let me know if he really did that. Swing music is rhythmically propelling with a flowing beat that stirred up much excitement. Masters of this musical form were, I'll just read down the line, Roy, Little Jazz Eldridge, trumpet, Coleman Hawkins, the father of the tenor sax, tenor sax man, Lester Young, known as the president of the tenor sax, Mary Lou Williams, pianist and composer, Count Basie, pianist and band leader, Chick Webb, drummer, band leader, Cab Calloway, singer, dancer, band leader, Fletcher Henderson, band leader, composer, pianist, Jimmy Lunsford, band leader, proficient player of all the reed instruments, Johnny Hodges, alto sax man, Art Tatum, a pianist extraordinaire, Lionel Hampton, fiber harp man, still on the scene, Lionel Hampton, Ella Fitzgerald, singer, and Billy Holiday, singer. It should be noted as we just witnessed that dancing, dancing always accompanied jazz music, and during the 1930s, dances such as the Lady Hop or Jitterbug were popular. The hustle appears to be a modified version of the Lindy Hop. Now, jumping double dutch will give you a rhythmic feel of how the jitterbug was done. Dances like the Fox Trot was very popular also. The freeze, the break, and the conga line. We may get a conga line going as we conga line out this afternoon and when it's all over. The 1940s ushered in another decade with a new style of jazz music expression. There came together a group of musicians who were swing style players. They wanted to play jazz in a manner that allowed for more musical expression. They began experimenting with chord progressions known as extended and altered chords. They utilized major six, major seventh chords, minor six, minor seventh chords, ninth chords, eleventh chords, thirteenth chords, and diminished chords to the maximum, and chords that we never heard of either created their own chords like Monk. Yeah, dig it. They met and played at a Harlem club. As of 1940, the club was managed by a saxophone player, an ex-band leader by the name of Teddy Hill. He was located, and it was located, at 210 West 118th Street. It was originally started in 1938 by another ex tenor sax man by the name of Henry Menton. Now, key players who held sessions, jam sessions there on Monday evenings. I don't know how many of y'all were there on Monday evenings. Anybody? 
Anybody that uh, was that? Yeah, looking in the window. Oh, okay. That, oh, he said he was looking in the window. He was still there looking in the window. Oh, he was looking in the window? Oh, yeah, okay. Say we looked in the window. Well, we didn't go inside. I guess we couldn't. We didn't have any money to go inside. Too young. Oh, okay, we're too young then. All right. It's all gone. Missed out. And Jam Sessions will help their key players with Dizzy Gillespie on trumpet. Joe Guy, trumpet man, Don Byers, tenor sax man, extraordinaire, Thelonious Monk, who was a house pianist, Ben Webster, tenor sax man, Charlie Christian, fine guitarist at the time he was playing with the, with the great Benny Goodman organization, Kenny Clark, one of the exponents of the modern type drumming, Kenny Clark on drums, Oscar Pettiford on bass, and when Charlie Parker came to town, of course, Charlie Parker. And uh, if you could play, they would smile very nicely at you on stage. But if you couldn't play, and you looked around, nobody was smiling, hey, baby, you were in trouble. <laughs> Charlie Parker's style of playing solos we utilized in this new innovative music. The new form was called bebop. It was precise and very difficult to play. It is still the dominant style of jazz today, which shows its merit and the genius Yes, the genius of his creators in the early 1940s. Yes, yes, yes. Jazz, 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 jazz. The word jazz is said to have been used long before 1900. However, it wasn't associated with music at that time. It was used to mean to excite, to titillate, to speed things up by Afro-Americans. So if you were around, around 1885 and 1890, anybody, you know, you would say, yeah, man, that was some nice jazz I had last night, man. Beautiful jazz. And that's the way the word was used, you know. Johnny Rowe Morton, pianist, claimed that he actually used the word jazz, specifically in connection with his music from 1902 on. One theory is that the word was derived from a singer named Jazz Bo Brown. This, however, can be authenticated. The word jazz bow was used prior to 1900 to denote a sharply dressed person. Man, it has jazz bow in it. Yes, indeed. In 1916, a cafe in Chicago named Schiller's, or Schiller's Cafe, it is said that a band, then known as Johnny Stein's Band, was told by a inebriated customer to jazz up the music. But remember, as I indicated, the word was used by Afro-Americans prior to this incident. This customer was hired to yell out, jazz it up, jazz it up, by the management. And the band then became known as Stein's Dixie Jazz Band. When this band came to New York City, it was billed as the original Dixieland Jazz Band. But we know that it wasn't the original, but it was called this as a selling point. And jazz was spelled J-A-S-S. -S. It was later spelled J-A-S-Z and then J-A-Z and finally as we know it J-A-Z-Z -Z, which was an eye-catching combination of letters. The dictionary explanation of jazz is thus an American music developed from ragtime and blues because blues is the whole basis of it all. You can ask any musicians. If you can't play the blues, ain't no need trying to play anything else. You gotta play the blues first, you dig it? So, an American music developed from ragtime and blues characterized by propulsive syncopated rhythms, polyphonic ensemble playing, varying degrees of improvisation, and often deliberate distortions of pitch and timbre. This explanation is quite complex. I say the best explanation is hearing the music itself. For that is worth more than a thousand sophisticated words. And you're going to hear some music today. Yes, indeed, you are. Because we have in the audience sitting now, getting ready to come up on the stage, we have the great Rafiq Williamson and the fabulous, fabulous bass player by the name of John, John, John Orr. You say, oh, man, dig it? John Orr, baby. He's played with everybody, you know. He's a, he's a, a walking history book. You see him coming up. That's a, that's a history book. You know, you name the guys he played with. Does Lester Young ring a, a familiar bell to anybody? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Lester Young. Uh, let's see. I have the list here. 
that's that's the one that uh, I remember, Elmo Hope. I guess you remember Elmo Hope, and I know you remember Thelonious Field Monk. You understand? Thelonious Monk, and uh, let's see who else. Uh, yes, indeedy. Tiny Grimes, George Wallington, Ben Webster, Coleman Hawkins, Bud Powell, Sonny Stick, Sun Ra, Teddy Wilson, Joe Jones, Big Nick Nicholas, Freddie Red, Danny Mixon, and it goes on. I'll be up here all night, you understand? But they're going to give you a taste of the jazz as we know it today. And our mistress of ceremony will give the introduction. Thank you, guys.